Whoever has the least amount of distractions and the highest amount of drive is worthy of me putting my time into them. I, I got what I wanted through words, exchange, work, charm. I got what I wanted. I get to uh, dictate the life I want to build, whether big or small, I'm left alone to build my life to my standards. Uh, if I want it to be simple, great. If I want it to be big, great. I remember one time we recruited an agent and we're doing his business plan. One of our guys in the office doing the guy's business plan. He gets his insurance license. In the business plan, questions asked, why are you doing this? He says, well, on my job, I make $50,000 a year. The only reason I became an insurance agent is because I want to make enough money to buy the $30,000 Harley Davidson I want to buy. I love competition, Eric. I don't know why. I just love competition. What kind of competition? I don't care what kind of competition it is. It could be competition on who can do the most push-ups. It can be who can do the most pull-ups. It can be who sprints the fastest. One night, we're in Encino in this building. I want to say 6345 Balboa Boulevard. It's 03. It's right out of corner of Victory and Balboa. The people that see this, if you remember, I'm in a suit. One of the coaches comes out. He's 40 years old. I'm 23 at the time. Super cocky, okay? And he says, I can whoop any of you right now on racing. Da -da -da -da. Anybody, I can whoop all you 20-year-olds. So I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen. We have to at least find out about this. We go in the back uh, of the parking lot. And I said, okay, I got a suit on. I take my jacket off. They take my tie off. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to run. I said, I'm going to take my business shoes off. I take my business shoes off. I just have black socks. So I said, which car you want to race to? We pick a car. It's all the way down. It's like 100 yards or something. Let's race to that car. Great. Ready? We line up, stretch a little bit. Boom. Go. We run. We're right next to each other, right next to each other, right next to each other, right next to each other. And all of a sudden, boom, I take off. Right. And I feel like I'm the Middle Eastern Usain Bolt and I'm just going, going, going. Boom. I beat him. And I'm so proud of myself that I beat him. You know what the moral of the story is? The, the desire to compete is a very unique feeling where it's fun to find out if you really are good at it or not. I'm in the army and I'm fighting these guys. I've never done organized fighting, nothing. I'm just a big guy and I think I know how to fight. There's 200 of us, I'm in the middle, we're fighting. I'm going against this guy, that guy, this guy, that guy. Couple of the big guys, we're going out, it's a good fight. He wins once, I win once. And then this 130 uh, pound kid shows up and he say, hey, but David, let me, let, me, let me try you. I said, man, I don't wanna hurt you, bro. It's not fair, you know, it's fine. He said, no, let me just try you. I said, no, I'm not doing it. He said, just give me a shot. If you hurt me, it's fine. Macho, big ego, tough guy. I come from the streets of LA. I'm like, here's who I am. Within six seconds, I'm on my back and I'm tapping out. I'm like, you got to stop. I don't know what you're doing. I said, what's the matter with you? He said, what do you mean? I said, how do you know how to do this stuff? He said, well, I was a state champion in Florida. So you should have told me this before we started fighting, right? So you start realizing I can't compete in this area. Mm -hmm. I can't compete in that area. I can't compete here. Capitalism, specifically on the business side, a lot of people can win one year. You can do well five years. You can even kill it for 10 years. It's going to take about 20, 30 years to see if you can hang. And the bigger players, they don't go one, five, 10 years. They go for 20, 30 years. And you know what happens? They look back and they say, wow, what happened to that guy? Man, I thought he was so formidable. Well, he slowed down 11 years ago. Don't worry about him. He got his Harley, but the Harley was a $10 million home on the water in Newport and he was happy. But then you see a couple other guys that were not as talented, but they just weren't stopping and they were big thinkers. And they're right next to you and you say, so you're a pretty big thinker, huh? Yeah. When you stopping, can't tell you. It's yeah. like another 10 <laughs> years, we got to go, right? There is a, there's a part about this gamesmanship if you enjoy it. Can anybody be an entrepreneur? hundred percent. Can, can you and I take somebody that's making 50 grand a year as a business and help them make a quarter million, help them make a million, help them make a million and a half, two million? Sure. But once we're no longer there, can that person continue to 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, hundred million? You don't know. Yeah, so I don't like to be disrespected and I don't like to be bullied. Ah, that's all it took. So that's what happened? Yes. So, so you had somebody try Bigfoot you? Yeah, two people. And when that happened, I flew out to Atlanta and I sat around the room. I talked to all their lawyers and I told them what my decision was. They said, you'll never leave. Uh, we've had people give us threats like this many times. They're only doing this because they want people given to them or they want a big check. You're not going nowhere. You're the number one guy right now. The way you're growing, it's fast. You're not going to go anywhere. You're going to be fine. And they thought I was bluffing. And there was another lady there who was an employee at home office. I wrote about her in Your Next Five Moves, a lady named Susan. 
And she was disrespectful multiple times. I did not like the way she treated um, certain people. And then based on a couple conversations, I have a couple codes I follow as a man. Uh, we pray for four things as a family, courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. Uh, we choose to lead, respect, improve, and love. Uh, we feel in every situation you gotta choose to lead. Your saving grace long-term is to choose to improve in every situation you can. Respect everybody, you can learn from something everybody's got to offer. And I love people because everyone's dealing with something. The last one's very hard to do, but you gotta love people. But there's two other uh, caveats there as well. Never bully, but never allow anybody to bully you. And I'm just not gonna you know, subscribe to them. When that happened, I had a meeting with a couple guys, one of the men there who I have a lot of respect for is a man named Rich. To be rich is a class act of a human being. Him, his wife, he doesn't know this, but he impacted me a lot as a man on what kind of a man I wanted to be. Uh, there's a lot of people that have very good relationship friendships with, but once that happened, there was a couple meetings where everybody was saying they're gonna leave. We're at this one meeting in Diamond Bar and a bunch of, oh, we're gonna go start this and we're gonna go start that. And I'm like, okay, so what are we gonna do? And then another meeting at this Islands restaurant in Porter Ranch with this other guy that I love this guy. He's like, I'm about to leave, I'm about to do this. And then we ended up leaving and starting our company. Within 30 days, we got sued. A 400 page lawsuit came from them. And a person in there. The, the person who sued me ended up being on our board three years later. Here's the, here's the part. I don't want to play uh, uh, as a victim no. here, or I don't want to pin this as I was this nice guy and everything, because I also wasn't. I was a worker. I was a driver. I would run through the walls. I wear your colors. I'm all in. Let's go. You know, I'm the guy that if I tell you I'm going to do something, it, you know, it's it's on me to make sure I deliver. So I'm not sitting here pinning myself, presenting myself as this angel. 100% I'm not the angel. But at the same time, I, I expect respect from anybody I do business with. I give everybody respect. Least amount of distractions, highest amount of fire. Fire is when you want to fight for somebody else and yourself. So mom, dad, kids, wife, husband, you know, you got a chip. I love when you got a chip. There's somebody that offended you, somebody that disrespected you, somebody that broke up with you, somebody that fired you. You can't create that enough. I'm writing a book right now that we just finished. It's coming out. Penguins, you know, it's going to be Penguins, the top business book they're coming out with. The title of the book is called Choose Your Enemies Wisely. Choose Your Enemies Wisely. Business planning for the audacious few is what this book is about. So I love when somebody has a real enemy. If you don't have a real enemy, I can't really push you. I can't challenge you. If the enemies are fake, if there's stuff that's just weak, not going to move you. So if you're married with kids, high fire drive, low level of distractions, that's a person I want to work with. And then there were certain people that you coach one on one. There were certain people you coach one on five, smaller group setting. There are certain people that are just you coach generally with an audience. You don't put a lot of one on one time into them. You're general. You're part of the audience. The one on one people are your running mates that are going to be the face me i think god chooses certain people to stand up for others it just doesn't sit well with me i like i like to have respect be part of the game and i i'm a fair guy